And to have you back, it's time now to look at the stories on the front pages of newspapers today. And to do that with us is Dr. Dan Kerry, uh, is a lecturer with the University of Lagos. Good morning to you and thank you for joining us Good on morning. the show. Good morning. Nice to see you. <laughs> Good to be here once again. All right. So we start with the punch. And the major story on the front page is Lagos Ibano Expressway. FG considers increasing scope of work to 300 billion naira. FEC in marathon meeting approves 377 billion naira contracts. In fact, during that meeting, about 960 billion naira worth of uh, contracts were approved. Yeah, I, I think that would be a good one, a good way to end the year. But uh, one thing is to approve, another thing is for work mm. to actually to take effect. Mm. Exactly. Because uh, we've, we've had you know, approvals over the years, and at the end of the day, the work remains the same. So I, I think it's, this is one major project that the government really need to speed up because it's a major road in Nigeria. You know, you, you, you can't do without at least linking Lagos. And the only way to do that is that road, through that road. So you need to put that road in order. And I think this would be a good idea. And I'm only expecting that the minister will ensure that this approval translates into work mm. being done. Mm. Now, I, I think with the Senate uh, questioning a lot of things on the budget, 2018 appropriation yes, bill, right. it seems it's going to be speeding up work now, activities, money is released because they say, yeah, uh, certainly. The, the implementation of the 2017 budget exactly. is, is less, less than 20 percent. Exactly. 20 exactly. exactly. Mm. So, so know, what are you talking and about? And again, some of the projects you are going to budget money for mm. are projects that are already captured. So they want to see the extent of exactly. work. Exactly. And I think that is the most reasonable thing mm. any Senate will do. In fact, some senators asked, asked questions uh, about that. Uh, yeah, some I, I, quoted, I think uh, truly projects, the, yeah. the Senate has really woken up. With respect to this particular budget mm -hmm. in question, I, th I think they've woken up. They begin to look at things more critically than this usual party affiliation mm. and all the rest that the eyes have it even where you wake up from mm. sleep. And mm. all the, <laughs> This time around, I think they are putting their eyes, you know, to every issue that is going on, uh, especially the details of the budget. Indeed. And I, I think it's commendable. Really. In fact, they've called the ministers to come and defend their budgets, mm, yeah. else uh, nothing would be done on them. So moving on to another story. Uh, Hetzman shoots at NAF fighter jet in Adamawa. Uh, the fighter jet was uh, sent there to, uh, for intervention purpose, uh, but then the headsmen there were, were shooting at, at the fighter jet with the hope of even shooting it down. And something I mean, interesting. What else? Yes, but something interesting yeah. was that the, the instruction given to the, the NAF officials, were, those that flew the fighter jet, was that they, just, they should just shoot to scare them, not to shoot to, to kill. kill. No, because they are headsmen mm. and they are full of knees. Mm. So you don't shoot to kill them. But if they are iPod, you shoot to kill. You see, the, this double standard game must stop. Somebody is attempting to bring down, you know, an aircraft of the Nigeria Air Force, mm. and you are saying that shoot to scare. Okay, assuming they bring down the aircraft and kill the people on board. So what you do? You shoot to scare them. You see, typically these are the kind of people that you should call, you know, they are miscreants to start with, and we just keep calling them headsmen, <coughs> you know. These are miscreants, these are terrorists, the real mm. group that you call terrorists are this you know, category of people because they just invade the place and start killing. And they wield weapons, dangerous and weapons. And you see, these are weapons that are not made for cattle rearing, honestly. We used to know cattle rearers, and all we see them with is just that they are usual, you know, dagger. The and they stick. <coughs> yeah, exactly, you know? they have some daggers. But, but, but the point there is, not carrying guns. A, a lot of people have said, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of people have said that these these herdsmen, the killer herdsmen, are originally not Nigerian. They are the ones who go from country to country, and so they are ready to meet anyone anytime. We know our herdsmen. <laughs> we know how they have always been. We've lived with them. For We've ages. lived with them for years. And, and we never. In fact, those it. days we used to wait for them to come because you know they will bring Nunu and Fura I, to I, you. That, no, Why? In fact, <laughs> one thing I noticed was that if, in those days. When they are, for any reason, the cattle eventually graze on any per person's farm. Mm. My community, for instance, I'm a Manisoko man. We don't speak Hausa. A lot of us, in fact, there used to be one, just one man in the community then that used to speak Hausa. They would look for the man to do interpretation. Exactly. That this man's cattle graze on my farm. The, even the, the cattle rearers themselves will come for settlement. Mm. What and what has been destroyed? Exactly. How much? Sometimes they give a cow. Mm. That's okay. Use this as a compensation. Mm. Sometimes when they come, even happy. without grazing on your farm, mm. they give cows to the community but because they are grazing yes, around there. Do you get it? But then sadly, now what they do now, because 
They have killed so many people in my community. They have sacked the community from farming for in several years. In many states, really. Mm. Many states. I'm talking of my own, uh, my own community. This, this, I'm, I'm not looking at reports. I'm saying what I have experienced. Mm. They even go as far as raping women. Mm. The moment they step into the, uh, the farms, the next thing is they look for humans and start shooting. Mm. There is no provocation. Nothing mm. like, okay, we had this encounter or the confrontation. Exactly. And they, the moment they see you, they, not only that, they break into the huts to carry food. But many have wondered, really, if truly, like Mike just said, some are th saying that they are foreigners. It doesn't many matter where they are from. These, some, these are still, are some, like, some even wonder, man. really, why <coughs> then the government is delaying in, in taking action. No action is being taken because they are the real cattle owners. Mm. These ones are just, you know, the servants who are carrying, those who are carrying the cattle are not the owners. Mm. And you, it will baffle you. How did they come about these arms? The weapons. Because some of them don't even have the means of livelihood, mm. really. They not to talk of buying Sophisticated arms, weapons. You know, so exactly. sophisticated. All right. Well, so quickly, yes, yeah, exactly. uh, we need to look at these disturbing, uh, uh, pictures, uh, there. disturbing pictures <laughs> there uh, of an accident uh, that occurred along uh, Lagos Benin Expressway. And then there's a story as well of a separate uh, accident uh, along Lagos Benin Expressway. It says, Ten passengers die in Ogun auto crash. Sadly, this is usually the trend during the Yule time. Yeah, because, I mean, you find a lot of rush. You'll see all manner of hustle and bustle for the period. A lot of people are impatient. You know, and in some cases, because drivers want to make, you know, quick money, some of them don't even check mm. the vehicles. You, you just arrive from uh, where the next moment, because you feel there are, you know, uh, commuters. The next thing you, you carry and start going without mm -hmm. even doing any proper check. You don't know the state of the vehicle. You just carry. And for passengers, you hardly, there's no way you're going to look at the vehicle to know whether the tires are able straight before exactly. you enter. Or the engine yeah. is good and or something. Interestingly, mm -hmm. sometimes the vehicles are able scarce. You see the mad rush. Mm -hmm. Because of that, people just enter any kind of vehicle. Mm -hmm. And the next thing is this kind of scenario. And, and some of these drivers have not even slept. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we had the um, sector commander of the road safety here sometime. He said that the majority, the cost of majority of these accidents is over speeding. Yeah. That because is everybody is in a rush. Everybody is just trying to beat time. Beat time I, will, I, will agree, I will agree with them. I will mm -hmm. agree with them. Because they want to be as fast as possible. Exactly. In order to, to come back yeah, and make more money. It's a function of how many trips you are able to yeah. make. So <laughs> you, you expect that. But I, I think I, they need I to. Wish, I wish that's how money is really made. <laughs> that is an annoying thing. Yeah. You know. Okay, let's move to the nation newspaper now. We have um, in politics here, El Rufai to Atiku. Prove that you funded Buhari's campaign. Governor says ex-VP quit APC over 2019 ticket. Atiku has said no decision yet. Uh, this was when they were talking or featuring on the Voice of America uh, uh, radio program. The what what, what proof is there if I ask him for? That uh, Atiku, has he not been a member of the party? Well, uh, well are, are you saying that Atiku just folded his arms and the APC was just carrying on? Mm. Uh, we knew how Buhari's campaign was funded then. Because the, we saw if what he declared was anything to go by, mm. that certainly would not have been able to prosecute an election in his local government, mm. let alone a country like Nigeria. Mm. So you cannot, you don't need to look for proofs. There are some things that you don't need proofs. You, you were able to hold the but, ticket but, for him. So yeah, what are we talking about? Yeah, but going into 2018, yeah. this, this kind of rivalry where war of words mm. between political <clears throat> between political parties and, and politicians, we're yeah. going to see more of this. Oh, and this, these are the things that really heat up the policy. Of course, say. and let alone for a man, an overambitious man like Erufa, who, who, who is doing eye service, trying to prove to Buhari that <laughs> he, he is a very loyal person and all of that you expect this but, but, but hasn't uh, Rufai <laughs> proven himself uh, to be a technocrat under uh, president buhar or the president of passenger what do you call technocrat okay. what did he do okay destroy houses in abuja <laughs> or what no, i i i i'm yet to see that what do you call technocrat that somebody was a minister and he was busy demolishing houses and is that what you call technocrat? He was just trying, trying to, to uphold, uphold the abuja the master, master plan, plan. does that make him a technocrat hmm. that he was demolishing houses in order to keep to a master plan. Okay, okay going back to yeah, so uh, the inner runnings of the APC, it just asked the question, it's a very, very simple question, Atiku, prove to us that you funded Buhari's That's uh, campaign. That's exactly what I'm saying, that those proofs are not necessary. Because these things are in public domain. They, they, they are too glaring for anybody to look for proofs. All right? Atiku is one of the biggest machines they have in that place. And... Uh, we know the others who but make it. But from how it's played out, from what we heard anyway yeah. during the prior, the, 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 the man wanted to be, the yeah, he wanted to be the wanted candidate. Exactly. Beautiful. That was at the level of, you know, uh, the primaries of the party. Mm. That is different from funding the Afterwards. presidential election. Mm. Because at the primary mm. level, Atiku wanted to emerge 
um, somehow <laughs> the man couldn't find his way because a lot of things happened. Mm. But having lost the ticket to Buhari, he definitely would contribute to the campaign of the party. Mm. Atuko has a lot of fullership. Fullership does not come with empty stomach. It comes with a lot of motivation. And that will tell you that this is one man that you must look out for. And they know yeah. he's a chair forgiver. <laughs> well, and he has what to give. <laughs> <laughs> he has the resources. So what I would okay. About. Yeah, we have a picture of uh, the governor of Lagos State and his mm. wife. They're spending usually at this time, some time of season, they always spend time with children and uh, the less privileged and so on. Yeah, let's move on. All right, so we'll go to the, uh, the Daily Sun. The major story, Innocent's arrest, anger in Senate. Senators blast the FCC over involvement in civil matter. Businessmen released on bail as IVM workers protest. Now, uh, mm -hmm. this uh, was what played down yesterday when yes. uh, the CEO of uh, Innocent was arrested by the FCC. And many are asking questions. Why that? Yeah, if... The discussion, as it was reported, particularly by the likes of uh, the Deputy Senate President, Senator Baribe and the rest, if, if there's anything to go by, then the EFCC has a lot. If, if not only two of them, even Professor, is he a day year, the man from Mundo State? Also. Yeah, he equally raised the case. You see, this is an issue that is between two business parties. One, you know, a bank, then the other one, mm. an auto, whatever. Mm. This thing has even gone to court. And there have been cases that there were rulings mm. to the effect that even the bank should pay the bank money. That in fact, the, the PR uh, uh, you know that they are only over five hundred million by virtue of their you know very useless and fraudulent deductions. deductions. Banks are very good at that, mm. you know. And the man said, "No, you don't just pay me this money. You pay it with interest because mm -hmm. I took a loan from you, and I'll be paying interest on the loan. Mm. I've cleared the loan. Now that you had my money, we mm. should do a calculation. Exactly. Pay at the same rate." Mm -hmm. So what is the business of EFCC in this? So it's shocking. Banks always feel they can do anything they like, you know, because I noticed that there are a lot of these, and in any case, banks in Nigeria are not really banks as they should be. They are mainly forex traders. Otherwise, our economy by now would have grown more than it is. So this kind of issue should be looked into very thoroughly, not only on the part of you know, uh, the, the bank, even the activity of EFCC, because somehow Mago carries on as if he's an overlord. Mm. You don't just jump into issues because somebody has maybe uh, done something to you behind the scene and the next thing you... you I, I expect that he should look at issues that border on proper financial crimes. No, because his own is economic and financial crime. Against who now? Mm. We, okay, what is the basis of the arrest? What has he come up with that? Okay, this is what this man did. And I remember the press were trying to interview him. All he right. said they will so find a solution. Okay. Now. You know, he's escaping. So let's quickly go to another story, because of time. PDP leaders furious over Splinter Group's emergence. We will expose their sponsors. That's according to the chairman of the party, Secondos. <laughs> uh, of course, I'm sure you heard that uh, there is another faction, faction now of the PDP, Fresh you know, PDP. The PDP is here to learn a lesson. You know? <laughs> 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 well, but it's not shocking. Mm. Because the, where PDP is today... PDP is like a lion, you know, a dead lion, more, more like, whose sight is still more frightening than a living goat. Mm. I, I foresee that the APT, APC still sees some, some force in the PDP. All right, so all manner of things can happen. There could be alignment. But the PDP, then again, the, within the PDP I, itself, they have not learned how to do things differently. It is still the same old show. And that is why, this was how five governors and the rest left the party the other time. And before you know it, the party was nowhere. The same thing is happening now. But you could see the Amodu Sheriff factor too, how the thing dragged the party. So I would be surprised if these people have some affiliation with one group or the other mm. that is just bent on destroying the PDP. Mm. But I want to think that the party politics of PDP need to you know, be put on a public scale so that they should begin to, you know, feel the bite of people. As much as we wanted them to stand as a virile opposition, they should equally realize that they owe the nation a duty. Because this is a party that has been, that was in government for over 16 years, or for about 16 years. Yeah. Only for it to begin to play itself out like, uh, you know, a, a, a new party that has not known anything about politics. Okay. It's shocking. I think we, greed is a major issue there. All right. We, we, we know that in the coming days, a lot will still unfold for us to talk about that. Let's go to the Vanguard newspaper now. You know, some boss flown to Lagos in shots. Uh, we have uh, 
talked about that. Group moves to break PDP, sets up parallel secretariat. We've talked about that too. Then fuel scarcity persists. May Ma Christmas. Uh, but what is the business of this fuel scarcity now? Because Short for initially we understood that uh, it was a fear of strike. We ask that question every year. <laughs> <laughs> you see, and it's always at a period like this. What is going on? Okay. Because the, the, the PPMC also, the MB said that uh, there was one uh, publication online and, uh, that there was going to be increment. Now we are still talking of mm. fuel scarcity. After... Pengasen or whatever has Call said, we have suspended. Mm -hmm. Suspended the strike. Yeah, something features. All right, and NMPC to build 4,600 megawatts power plants in Abuja, Kaduna, and Kano. Yes. This NMPC to build mm, a, power a power plant. plant. So what happens to the refineries? <laughs> is that a power plant to service refineries? Okay. <laughs> what is the primary uh, responsibility? You're seeing it from where a lot of Nigerians <laughs> are going to, to see build power plant the relationship between NMPC and the and building I mean, of power plants. You've not carried out your duties and, and they're venturing the out. Power holding now. <laughs> Focus on the refinery. Let's see anyway, the work. They can get more uh, get details of, <laughs> of what of, of all of this, wow. but that is going to be a contractual uh, partnership, as the case may be. Thank uh, you very much, uh, Dr. Daneke, for coming on the program. <laughs> Thank you. I enjoyed doing this. <laughs> Yes. All right, we'll go on a short break now, and when we return, it will be time for our first discussion, and it will be the developing controversy over the $1 billion the governors have agreed to help uh, fund uh, the fight against Boko Haram in the country. Stay with us.